How, uh, how about, about the piece that uh, you sculpted and it's like in different colors also? But the different colors are called patination. Mm -hmm. That's treatment of the bronze in a permanent way that give it either ancient, uh, ancient look or um, they may give you a warm brown, even red patination or gold leaf. Oh, um, yes, I have one gold leaf, it's not here. And also, as for the sculptures, I have the uh, documented big sculptures, and I'll pass you the files. And where do you have them at now? I have one big in uh, Switzerland, another big in Germany, mm -hmm. Geneva, Hamburg, actually two big in Geneva. And I'm preparing at this moment a life-size Sculpture of Nijinsky, oh, the great sculptor Amazing. and dancer. He was a ballet dancer. Yes, and Václav Nijinsky. Um, I had been working on him, and I have several works on him. Even right there in the corner, there is one of him. Uh, oh, the, the very small piece. Uh -huh. in, oh, that one with the, the head piece on. Yes, the blue god. Uh, it's one of his famous roles. So. Uh, basically, for me, the sculpture is uh, the quintessence, the condensed magic, the condensed magic of floating uh, magnificent energy of inspiration, vision, and uh, mix, mist uh, that solidifies and becomes a radiating, eternal art piece. I also have done a lot of portraits and sculpture. What do you think is the most interesting subject you ever had so far? Oh, that's such a good question. I can't say. Presently I'm working on the Indian god Shiva. Shiva, that's what I thought. No, not because I have some special fascination or dedication mm -hmm. to the Indian region, of which I know something, but uh, it's not my uh, world of dreams. However, I'm greatly fascinated with his uh, posture and with his being dancer, and under him, I'm working on uh, Oh, you just he's not Yes. This is beautiful. Yes, I'm wondering I'm working on Nijinsky. That's a beautiful piece. But then, see, his hand, his work, his body, his work. Mm -hmm. So, if you wish, Nijinsky did the role, the blue god, mm -hmm. which was one Which piece. ballet was that? Dagilev. Dagilev. Yes. That was the special the seasons the of Dagilev's, yes. yes. Um, the ballet was mm -hmm. uh, the famous ballet was, which conquered Europe and America. And the Pablo was part of it, I believe, right? The this maybe, is the maybe later. Maybe. Later. Maybe later. Uh, yes. I'm just going to And then tell me, so you, you also work with the, the crayons? Oh, oh, that's oil the oil pastel. That's the oil pastels. Yeah, well, that's one of my techniques, my special techniques, uh, when I want to tense and quick delivery mm -hmm. of uh, material. Canvas, yes. like this. Um, these are all pastels. Mm -hmm. See, the advantage is that one can strike stronger elliptic grain in the surface, mm -hmm. different from the oil paints. Much, yes. Okay. Um, and also, one could cover very fast with great dynamism. I think it's a stronger, harder kind of like darker base. Uh, it is, and also you can feel the resistance of the canvas, which is very important. Yeah. You know, the, the canvas pushing back against you. And so, so here is Shiva, mm -hmm. and, and why is it all the way around? But what is that? Well, mean? he has a circle, you know, of running around him, uh, and I decided to sort of modify the circle and have per perfect circumference. Mm -hmm. I decided to make this ornamental, ornamental, uh, the form of it. 
Like, how did you pick the subjects like uh, like this? Because uh, for, uh, because of the yeah. So basically, that's him in there too. In some way, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you absolutely answered my question. How did I venture to Shiva? <laughs> because he's a dancer. He's a dancer. And he's the one of the few dancing gods that has the title. He has many appearances. He does. Yeah, he has, absolutely does. Uh, and, uh, he has the title of Shiva the dancer. And he did the role that is called the blue god. Beautiful gear and, and tunic, etc. Mm -hmm. And I could relate only to Shiva. So that's why I'm experimenting with him, and that's very much at the beginning. He has to go further. Uh, and and this guy, this guy has to get a real portrait of Jinsky the head. Yeah, so you basically looked at the records and you wanted yes, to see the photos of Oh, okay. Because you know some some of them are not like clear because the pictures are so old. So yeah. you well now therefore I have three or four. Oh, yes, 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 I see that. Yeah. This is very different from this, mm -hmm. but that is an idea which is contemporary sculpture. That gives an idea of slightly exaggerated face, making him really suited for a palm well, especially know, satire. Yes, yes, yes. This one that was the most scandalous of that shoot yes. him. Uh, this did shoot him to a superstar in Paris when he played it's called the afternoon and phone. Mm -hmm. And the music of Claude Debussy and that shot him to a superstar in 1913. So, um, later on I'll show the complete sculpture of Mijinsky for him for class. Now, what would be your most difficult time of your life as far as transitioning to become an artist, an accomplished artist? Because I know a lot of artists, they go through so much search inside of them, through okay. their hardships and through, like what do you think was the turning point for you? Well, I'll tell you, I'll answer this way, and now I have easy time. Uh-huh, now you have easy time. Do you think you create less than you were before, or is it more, um, what do you think is the most special time when you are creating a piece? Because I know when uh, people go through turmoil, they, they have more coming out of them. When you have more stable life, you know, people more comfortable, so their creation changes. D did it change for you in any way, or what is new for you in you found in yourself to to still create pieces that push you to the edge? I would like to see myself mm -hmm. as a failure. Yes, one hundred percent failure. I never came close to the goals that I dreamed of. But on the other hand, I came one day through some reading about the blessing of humility. Yeah. So anytime uh, when some people grab the pillow, they scream in the pillow, and I'm in the same condition, mm -hmm. I don't put the pillow, I just say, I'm relapsing in humility <laughs> until again the pain and the punishment the search to do something that I did not manage to do uh, hits me again. Um, for instance, there is the Walt Disney Theater yes. and on the West 42nd Street mm -hmm. and I did a mural that was completely destroyed the mural was done by two German artists, Art Nouveau mural, in uh, uh, the beginning of the century. Uh, and the theater was owned by Netherlander, by Jimmy Netherlander. The time he wanted quick overnight renovation, uh, by some chance I ended up. And from a non black and white photograph, I put the grid system from the photograph. Uh, trying to reinstating, reinstating the figures. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also this totally labor situation. You know, do fast, do fast, paint fast. So I finished in uh, advanced quite a lot. And at that time, 
Jimmy Nagelan decided he doesn't want uh, the project any long and left it for a while, our works abandoned. Later on, um, Walt Disney purchased the theater. So they did not allow me to return and complete my work. They criticized very strongly my putting back the figures. Mm -hmm. But on the final account, uh, when they found that the only color photograph of this mural, which is giant, it is like, uh, uh, you know, it's probably, I would say, uh, 30, 35 feet, 40 feet Let long, <coughs> yes, semicircle oh. with height of maybe 20 feet. Mm -hmm. um, I'll show you, I have the book, I'll show you. When they found the original, uh, they saw that my colors are completely different. I did not have the original colors, and they decided to keep my colors. Oh, amazing. Yes. But I did not get paid, um, and for many years I've been trying to get paid as an artist. They said, no, you're hired as a labor hand, and you got yourself paid $15 an hour. And uh, that, that was a kind of big disappointment for me. And uh, another um, kind of large scale, uh, men doing uh, restoration theaters, buildings, interiors, and decorativity. He probably got a million dollars by claiming that he did this mural. And the most scandalous thing is they preserved my mural with no changes. Oh. They did not, according to the law of conservation, they have to revert mm -hmm. to the original, mm -hmm. to the exact colors after they found the document. But they left my colors, which means they credit my art to someone else, basically. And, and they, did not give, they did not give me the recognition. Mm -hmm. I tried to fight in court, but I had no chance against Walt Disney. But how do you think the artist can get paid? Because now this time and age, there's so many talented people, and it's so hard for them. Art culture can move forward instead of artists always being struggling artists and not to be able to do the work because they're struggling? Uh, well, there, there are good um, possibilities, like um, um, when I was teaching at the University of Maryland by pure uh, coincidence, I visited, um, and I visited um, Switzerland, uh, I got introduced to a uh, burn art dealer from Switzerland. I like my work, and he purchased 18 editions of my etchings, mm -hmm. which he sold very fast, mm -hmm. and he was paying me annual, uh, uh, not salary, but annual contract, and that was very good. Um, and at that time I felt um, creative, you know, teaching at university, generating these uh, etchings, working with excellent printers mm -hmm. um, in the shop. And that's a wonderful feeling. Uh, but then the guy drank himself to death and uh, I, I was such a good dealer. But that's one option. Uh, for me, publishing etchings mm -hmm. could be very um, rewarding and lucrative. And I still had many plates. Then I published etchings with another very good a New York dealer, and then for many charity causes, mm -hmm. I have published editions. The latest is uh, the Swiss house Hoffman La Roche, which is big top world medication sperm. Mm -hmm. So they invented the drug to treat hepatitis C, that was in about 2000, and they made a convention to all doctors interested in Athens mm -hmm. to see um, this drug, and they gave to every doctor one of my editions, etchings, they commissioned four editions. So that's one form. Uh, see, uh, if I had a good agent, I positively could be um, enjoying a lot of creativity with that many plates ready to print it in addition to what had been already done. Another thing for me are murals. You know, uh, 
Which which one was your last mural that you've done? Well, I told you the Walt Disney. Th th this is was the last one. Yes, uh, and also in Sweden, I did conservation of the oldest mural in Scandinavia, mm. uh, and uh, uh, that's one. So I'm speaking as the possibility of getting exposure and earnings for this murals for me. Mm -hmm. uh, publishing of actions, murals, and big commissions of sculptures. The commission in Hamburg mm -hmm. kept me going on for two years. Mm -hmm. The commission in Sweden kept me going also for two years. Big sculpture, and I'll show you this. These are uh, large sculptures. Uh, making shows is very good. But it has to be done by a gallery that has the means to give you its exposure. What do you think is the best gallery in New York for that matter? Well, you know, that's extremely political and I'll avoid, I see. Okay, I understand. I'll avoid saying yes. because it would promotion to people, I for see. people, of course. that uh, uh, they will be free. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'll be speaking good of people that may not uh, be interested in working with me. And it is like, uh, uh, it, it will make me partial. Let's say I praise one dealer today, it turns out that another dealer that would consider my work gets upset and say, well, if you like him, go after him. It's you true, know, it's so all political, I agree. It's, it's sensitive, not sensitive. only political. Sensitive yes. subject. Okay. It's like dating uh, one person or being asked which woman would you like to marry? Sure. You say, I would like to marry this, and one that is the real love, looking at you all through you all her life, uh, gets ticked off and say, oh, well, <laughs> selected her, and he doesn't see something like this. Now, what's your most favorite holiday? Location or time? T time. <laughs> Well, at the time I loved skiing in Switzerland in the winter. Uh -huh. And also during the summer, I loved going to the Caribbean. So, both season, winter, it's so healthy in the mountains, mm -hmm. skiing, and uh, the Caribbean is also extremely inspiring. But I sleep a lot. I go on the beach after the heat is gone mm -hmm. in the early evening. And pass out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in the early evening and uh, feel the magic of the air and the water. It is magic. What would be your next chapter in your life? What are you looking forward to? Uh, yes, I'm looking more for a lucky strike. Mm -hmm. Like the one I had with Franz Bader, mm -hmm. the dealer of Washington DC. Or like the Swiss dealer, which poor guy drank himself to death, but he was very good to me. Or getting big sculpture commissions like um, Nijinsky there is on the balcony, he's in parks. Oh. But I'll have been a composite of the whole thing and I'll show you. Somebody commissioned Nijinsky and many, many other sculptures. You know, I have a suite of absolute pieces of female male sculptures, so I have full um, dimension mm -hmm. of working every day on something new, big and uh, exciting to the public. Now, going through so many cultures in your life, what would be your favorite cuisine? My favorite cuisine? Uh -huh. Oh, that's a better question because I'm a cook. I'm a chef. Oh, you do? And how did you learn to do that? Here and there. Here and there. Um, do you yes. have people over the house for dinner? Yes, you do. I do. I do you think? I'll it's, have you. Thank you. But do you think that's more fun than you just go to the restaurant? Oh yes, of course. You know, um, I cook. Uh, I feel so important. I deliver universal truths to my audience. <laughs> I hear their opinions. And then the food is good, you know, you get there, our saliva running from the smell. 
-hmm. and you give the sound to your secrets now all the time. <laughs> and so, but favorite piece, and let me think, let me think. I, I have favorite meals from many different cuisines, but favorite piece. Like when you're growing up, the Bulgarian or Swedish, or because I know that's more like. Possibly you know, not Swedish. They have good stuff, but also not Swedish, not Polish? German. Polish? No. Not Polish. Too heavy? Uh, I, I could say preference for French, uh -huh. Italian, Spanish, Bulgarian, Hungarian. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but from all of this, from all of this, um, I'm picking up uh, one or two favorite dishes. Mm -hmm. See, like, uh, um, Meatballs. That's Italian, <coughs> isn't it? No, meatballs on grill. Oh, okay. Are uh, the favorite Bulgarian meal. Mm -hmm. They crave for this. And nobody does meatballs on grill as good as the Bulgarians. Mm -hmm. And they do parties, even in this country, when there's a picnic or, um, you know, um, uh, or, or party, Parties, yeah. outdoor party with grill of uh, steaks and chops and uh, sausages. Mm -hmm. Nobody does as well, and it's a simple thing. <laughs> then I like also uh, Greek cuisine. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite cuisines, I could say, not one country, but as a meal, is seafood. I love yes. seafood. Mm -hmm. uh, it is absolutely delicious. Uh, so, um, can come with the specific cuisine. Maybe later, after you walk through here, then I'll give you a call <laughs> and say, oh, and no, I realized I can explain why I did not say that none of this might be. And, and if you would choose any museum in the world, where would you like to have your whole collection exhibit at? That's such a good question. <laughs> Yeah. Like you would have a person who would offer. You can have it any way you want. What would you do? Where would you go? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I'll think between Louvre mm -hmm. in France and between uh, the Metropolitan. Okay. Or Metropolitan, they do have a lot of... Uh, yeah, well, on occasion, on and off, they pick up a major living American artists, like uh, uh, one of the artists that they exhibited. They exhibited a lot of upcoming names mm -hmm. in the roof garden sculpture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they do retrospective show of an American artist, it, it is a big, big figure, not only establishes an artist, but also with strong uh, society, political connections, like Chuck. Clothes, mm -hmm. etc. Still, they'd also be very happy with any major European museum uh, in Europe, like Prado uh, and like uh, again the Louvre and so on. Uh, but um, that's just a dream. But uh, you never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah. All good. You're going to probably going to be an important person in my life because I have to find somebody to run my state. Oh. Absolutely. And um, to to be able to take care of all these paintings when I change my residence. And where are you going? Upstairs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but, uh, but also I want to ask you, but because your story is fascinating because I know how difficult and challenging to go through countries to change the regimes, the, the politicians, the politics behind the country. What would be your advice to the people that are going through maybe different changes and like what, because you know, to, for us, for what I feel sometimes, it's, it's not what we do, it's the tool basically of developing who we are inside. So what would be your advice to those people that are starting their journey like you once did a while back when you were a very young student in Bulgaria? Okay, um, that is a very sensitive question. I very, yes. very sensitive and yes. very wise. 
question. Yes. Now, I'm not sure if my answer will be so wise, but it will be practical. Yes. First, keep your ideals to yourself. Okay. Uh, big inspiration is an ideal find. Mm -hmm. And in difficult times, in different countries and regimes, find joy in small things. Find uh, joy and happiness, things that are permitted and that are plainly humane because this is a great extent of the meaning of life. You know, uh, feel your heartbeat, uh, you know, hug people, I mean, emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, adapt an environment. Uh, don't go in turbulence. It is a great deception. All things that you read about heroes, mm -hmm. admirable characters, it is as dangerous as being uh, uh, some kind of temptation that will end up in a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, stay, stay humane. Don't try to be a hero. Absolutely don't try to be a hero leave behind all heroic and specifically martyr characters. They've done their thing. You don't need to double them. You don't need to repeat them. Yes. So, and then you find practically with such attitude and peace, internal peace, you find more nurture for yourself and more practical avenues. Um, you'll be better navigating You'll be seeing the big opportunities and be open to them. So otherwise, big desires generate big uh, rejections from the ones that could offer them. And when they're offered, uh, it, they may appear uh, to be the wrong offers. So uh, the adoption, the ability to adapt is the thing that I would recommend to everybody. And of course, peaceful and joyful love of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're, um, let's say, if you're quick, if you're a little bit of manipulator, schemer, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, forgive yourself for this and do yes. it. <laughs> do it. But, uh, to use an American expression, avoid ruffling feathers. Uh -huh. No, you can read in, in the horoscopes, yeah. in the daily advice, in the Facebook, <laughs> in the Facebook, <laughs> so in the Facebook, they say, do not try to please everybody. Be yourself, etc., yeah. etc. Okay, that's very good. But this is the opposite. Try to please everybody and uh, accept the others being themselves, mm -hmm. and then be yourself, etc. So that would be my advice to myself, if I could repeat the whole, goal, thing. the whole thing and uh, of course I'm, I'm a uh, religious man and I don't impose my religion I don't discuss it is it a religion when I go to a, uh, a party and a reception I don't say to some people let's talk about God what do you think about church what right, do you think course. about paradise and hell yeah those questions you don't really mm -hmm. touch because right. people have such different views and backgrounds. But, but they're part of my universe. Oh yes, and that you're mentioning this, I have a keen interest in all religions. Mm -hmm. And uh, because there is beyond doubt that the man is desperate to be patronized, to be supported, to be supervised by higher power. And this power is the So. So you believe it's the higher power moves everyone? It's a spin, it's a centrifuge mm -hmm. and finding space there. Do you consider life as a game? Very much so. Very much so, but it's a tactical game. Mm -hmm. For many people it's a gambling game. I for me it's a tactical game. Uh, I place great respect to blessings, to luck, to lady luck, to lady fortune, but uh, they're so seldom around. 
Yeah, can, can you change your destiny to advantage to yourself? That's what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to do. Um, and um, Eastern philosophy is helping quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I say Eastern philosophy because the conventional Bulgarian, Polish, Swedish, or American philosophy is drummed too much in my ears, mm -hmm. so I need a little bit of escape. But in some ways, I find this philosophy to be practically more applicable mm -hmm. and uh, requiring less submission, less submission to deity, to controlling powers. What are your three wishes? My three wishes? Three wishes. Oh, my three wishes? Yes, your three wishes. It's always our question. <laughs> well, um, financial independence. Yes. Um, and finding a beautiful, sweet, tempered woman. Uh -huh. And uh, um, getting recognition of my heart. I, I wish you all the best. We wish you Thank amazing you. success and uh, it's been such a delightful time with you here. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. It's my trick. I don't believe I'm being going to be part of your magazine. <laughs> it's Thank very, you. very exciting for us to finally meet it here. <laughs> and uh, also probably you and I could do some interesting things in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. And Pop and press come. <laughs> <laughs>